Rebbe, give everybody else a few minutes to catch up with us. They just found out we were here, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry, we're not waiting for you or anything. <laughs> well, wait, we are. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, guten Tag, Alla. Guten Tag. Oh, you're not even awake. At least say hi or something back, yeah? Guten Tag, guten Tag Alla. Guten Tag. Guten Tag. Ah, that's something. At least it gives me an idea that you have a pause. Well, <laughs> I would like to introduce myself. My name is Freya Gustav van, R van Reischak, Top and Van der Skelt Fane Line. These people you are seeing, they are, in fact, the Skelt Fane Line. That means they are the gold company. These are soldiers of the Holy Roman Empire. Yes. You all knowing the Holy Roman Empire, yeah? No? You know where Reichshark is? Uh, Bavaria? You heard of Bavaria. Very good, we start with Bavaria. Here's a hint, we speak German. Maybe that helps. Deutschland. <laughs> yeah, Deutschland. But I don't know what you're talking about. That's some kind of crazy idea that someday there would be one Germany. <laughs> That's like saying that all the Italian states would unify. And that ah, would never happen. Ah. <laughs> Always two. So, we have all come here today to tell you a little bit about the fighting style of the Renaissance. The year is 1528. And we are here to show you all of these marvelous weapons you see here displayed. I said, my name is Fire Gustav. I am a baron. My brother is the reigning baron of Raisha. And I am in charge of his fane line, his particular fighting force, his company. When we are not fighting for Raisha, we are fighting for whoever cares to pay us enough. That doesn't mean we're mercenaries, we're just good businessmen. <laughs> we are fighting in a style that is called pike and shot. It's something that is developed initially the pike formation by the Swiss who did not do it right so we made it better it's called German engineering we show you a little bit about the weapons uh, themselves and then we'll show you a little bit of tactics and then we would gladly answer any questions you might have we start by talking about the most important weapon that we have in our arsenal which is the biggest weapon you happen to see right here the pike. Um, Albert, come to see Oik. Don't get sure. No, perfect. Yeah, Albert, uh, try. The pike is a 14 to 20 foot long spear. It's based off of the weapon I carry here, but obviously much, much, much larger. It was designed to be used against cavalry. The way that you fight against horse or cavalry is quite simple. Gegen den Reutren, fellet den Spies, Reutren. Albert sets his pike so that the point will be at about the chest height of a charging horse. You'll notice that the base of the pike is trapped under his foot and pushed into the ground so that it is very difficult for it to move. This is good. Because the goal is, a horse charges on top of this, this pike runs into the horse, probably about, oh, say, this far, before breaking off inside the horse's chest. You know what happens to a horse that runs down a long piece of wood that's this far into its chest? It dies. It dies. It dies. More importantly to our bear, it stops. Because otherwise, he's in for a world of hurt. It may go a little bit further forward, but this is going to break and he's going to have a chance to move out of the way. What happens to the man on top of that horse? He goes, he goes that way <laughs> into all the rest of our bear's friends. In fact, <laughs> let's get some of our bear's friends behind them. Good job, Wolfram or Klaus. If you can imagine that all of them are set up either similarly on King and Reuter. He's flying into a very messy system, yeah? It's going to be very bad for him. <laughs> now the pike is not limited to use against cavalry. It can also be used against foot soldiers, against other infantry. Alla, gegen den, ja, auf der Achseln, outside. Auf der, trage den Spieß, auf der. 
Gegen den Fien, Fella den Spieß, Fien. When fighting against infantry, the front first three ranks are going to drop their points to be at a point to cause serious pain to anyone they come against. The other thing you'll notice is they all locked up against each other. This way, when I push on Albert, I'm pushing on the men behind him. If this pike line is 10 men deep, the first three will drop their pikes like this, but all 10 of them will close up tight. You're not pushing them over. So when two pike formations come together, the one with the most strength and the longest pikes is going to win. This is also uh, very effective against those infantry not carrying pikes, because we are essentially a walking pointy fortress. Now, finally, uh, let's not quite do finally yet. Should we say finally for a moment? So this is the first weapon in our arsenal, the pike. The Swiss did a very good job of designing the way this would work. But they did not design very good ways to fight against it. We came up with our own. I should tell you, first of all, that any pikeman who enlists in our army gets paid four guilder a year. Now, a good farmer makes about, oh, sorry, four guilder a month. A good farmer will make that in a year. So they are making 12 times what they could with a good farm. Not bad. This is why men join the army. Second, though, is they might have the chance for advancement. Friedrich, come to Friedrich is carrying something we call a halberd. It's a polearm. And Friedrich is a doppelsadner. Can you guess what that means? It's pretty easy. It means double, double soldier. soldier. We're German. We're not very original, yeah? <laughs> so a doppelsadner gets paid. Anyone care to guess? Double. Eight gilda in a month. He's paid twice what they are paid. That's because his job is twice as dangerous. The average beast trager expects to live between six months and a year. The average doppelsadner would love to live that long. But the reason they're here is they've already done their time in the pike line. So there's a little bit better chance because they're more experienced. Doppelsadners have a few important jobs. One, they might protect the flag. They're basically bodyguards for the flag. They might protect important officers such as myself. Or they might end up, so protection as bodyguards, this is one job. Second job, <coughs> watch at the back of the line. Any new speech targets decide they want to turn around and run for home, put them back in place. <laughs> Suddenly, you know, someone like Friedrich is standing behind you with this, you're thinking, yeah, I'll keep going forward. <laughs> Chances are, you know, they're probably not going to be as dangerous as he is. Especially if they're like French or something. So. <laughs> But the third thing that Friedrich does is the more dangerous thing. And that's what we show now. His job is to make a hole sometimes in a pike formation. Spies, a fast truck and then Spies, a fast. Alle Glieder, gegen den Reutrin, fellow den Spies, Reutrin. Now. We need to back up a bit. Yeah. <laughs> Aww. Aww. We're going to run away. No strategic retreat. <laughs> so, if you imagine that a pike line is normally between 300 and 400 men, the job of Friedrich and eight to ten of his friends is to make a hole in that pike block. It looks something a little bit like this. Go. Now, you will notice Friedrich's in a world of trouble. <laughs> That's why I come in, because I'm going to make holes in the people that he's, that he's too currently tangled up with. <laughs> you notice something now? We have shown you two weapons, yeah? yeah. yeah. No. no. Three oh. weapons, right? Uh, a little Friedrich. Thank you, Sean. Albert, both of these two gentlemen are carrying what we call the Katzbauger. Katzbauger is a short sword, and you will notice it does not have much in the way of a thrusting tip. This is because this is a soldier's tool. This is something we put in the hand of an untrained soldier. 
I mentioned I pay four guilder a month. <laughs> I do not provide any weapons. When you join the army, you buy this yourself. If you don't have the money, well, don't worry. The quartermaster will be more than willing to loan you some money at very reasonable rates. <laughs> four guilder sword, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Suddenly it becomes a very expensive sword. So, this is designed for anyone who's never used a sword to pick up and be effective. When you pick up a sword, anyone will instinctively do this. All right, well, you'll notice that Wolfram did the American thing, which is this. <laughs> but it's still the same idea. You will instinctively swing the sword. This is nothing you have to be taught. You will just do it. This is a good thing because being taught or learning how to thrust, that takes a lot of time and practice. So we don't even bother to put a thrusting tip on any of their swords. Mine is thin enough that I could do it if I want to, but honestly, I don't intend to actually use this. These are very much a heavy short sword so that they might be able to block something like that halberd blow that is coming towards their head after they have lost their pike. You'll notice it is carried sideways across the body so that when they are in a position of holding their pike, they can easily draw it and use it in close quarters. It is based on the uh, Roman sword, the Gladius. Well, we really like them, you know, we are Holy Roman Empire. We are the natural heirs to what they did. So we have shown you now four weapons, which leaves just one more. The one that may have gotten your attention and gotten you over here. Otto, come see Old Caspar. Otto is carrying what we call a matchlock. The matchlock is a very simple... Is you loaded? Yeah, well, oh, good to know. <laughs> very simple weapon. You know what? You hold that, I'll hold this one. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> I know it's also loaded. I'm good with this. Very simple weapon. It's a big metal tube which has a pan on one end and a, uh, a lock for firing. The ignition system for this gun is the burning piece of rope that Otto holds in his hand. Otto carries all of his own powder onto the field with him in the charges you see across his chest. Big piece of rope that is burning, lots of gunpowder over his chest. Otto is a walking bomb. Apparently, <laughs> 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 Friedrich is the only one too stupid to get out of the way. <laughs> So Otto, we will, uh, he is already loaded, so we will go ahead and show you the firing, and then you can see the loading in just a minute. Uh, Kaspar, come and see here. Dankeschön. As I said, burning piece of rope, this has been salt in saltpeter to make it burn harder and make it burn slower. What he does when he wants to fire, and he's going to do most of this, pointing this way, but he will fire down that way so he does not scare all the nice birds. <laughs> More than he will anyway. <laughs> he takes the match. He places it into the cock. Go ahead and do this. This way he can then line up the match. <laughs> he lines up the match when he has it in place with the pan itself. Push and drag. There you go. <laughs> He lines up where he wants it to hit and make sure that it's going to actually touch the pan when he pulls the trigger. Notice burning piece of rope, just thin piece of metal protecting him from loud bang, yeah? When he's ready, then he can present that way <laughs> and he will give fire. Give fire, fire. Now you're wondering why exactly is Caspar standing here with the second gun? Well, no, not yet. Go ahead and load first. Otto will first show you the steps of how we reload. He takes a new charge, pours just enough powder into the pan. Apparently he needs his teeth. It's faster than mine. Sure it is. He then closes the pan, turns it around, the rest of it goes down the barrel. So at this point, he would normally take a ball, 
throw it down the barrel of the gun. We're not doing that today. I don't know what's that way, and they would probably be upset if I hit whatever it was. <laughs> but the ball itself is very, is smaller than the barrel of the gun. He just drops it in. There's no need to ram it home. This stick on the side, this is for cleaning it out when it gets too much gumming inside from all the black powder. Take off your... Uh... Yeah, I got it. The charges, in this instance, are coming over here to his son. Put it on. There you are. Caspar has an important job on the field of battle. While his dad is now going to turn and fire another shot, Caspar needs to load the next gun for him. Get for him. Because this makes Otto that much faster on the field. Go ahead and load. So he loads the pan, loads the gun, Caspar fails to fire the gun, or Otto fails to fire. He then takes the gun, hands it off to his son, who hands him an already loaded one. He then starts to reload this next one, while his father keeps firing. Turns around, hands it off, pulls the pen, pulls the pen. Oh. We're still working on the on, on Casper being able to open the charges. <laughs> Sitting around and rest on the bell. <laughs> so this, with practice, makes you a much faster uh, shooter. If you have two or three of uh, arquebuses. You can have your wife and children handling the reloading while you are, don't reload that one. <laughs> while you are doing, while you are continuing the fire. This makes it much faster and we can put a lot more down range. This gun is not accurate. Our goal is not to hit whatever he is pointing at. His goal is to hit something in the area that he is pointing at. <laughs> Hopefully a person. <laughs> I don't care if I shoot here and I'm shooting at this man and I hit that one. I don't care. One of them fell down. <laughs> On the other hand, this man sees this man fall over dead after a loud bang with large men and all these poles and thinks, you know what? I've got something better to do at home. <laughs> He's turning around and leaving battlefield. So, and uh, your father back the gun, the charges. We will do a little bit of marching now and show you what this looks like on the field. Caspar. Stay here with the uh, gun and uh, pull out. Right here. Caspar will keep you company. Don't worry, he's cute. <laughs> I'm Fallen Auto. Advance, target and Buffin, advance. So we march around a little bit, show you a little bit about tactics, and then maybe a little force on force, yeah? Spinrad zum links, Spinrad, Force was yet, march. Oh no, don't take that far. Links, 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 works, links. Are you loaded, Otto? Spinrad zum links, Spinrad. This pain line is very nimble. 
force, able to do things on the march. Dragon and Fiend, follow the muffin. Fiend, spin on to links, spin on. Watch what you have, Marsh. Asteroid, Aster. Quantities, quantities! In the event that we were suddenly attacked by cavalry, the men are prepared to quickly drop their pikes, presenting a pike to every direction in hopes to slow down the cavalry. The musketeer can then give fire! Fire on any object he comes into contact with. Ashtarik, Ashtarik. If you imagine 300 men in that formation, it's like great big hedgehog, yeah? Yeah. Very good. Albert, you vote. What do you say we make this a little more interesting? Yeah. It sounds like one man here. Why do you not uh, take Friedrich on Wolfram, and you go that way, and I will take the other road and come this way? Oh, very good. Come and see here. Um, Georg, Georg, on Klaus, Otto. Otto. <laughs> Very good. So now what we will do is we will take our formation against their formation and hope to kill them first. <laughs> this is not too fair, my hair. Very good. Um, I have a plan. Let's see. We will take... Here, give me that, Casper. Very good. Go fight with him. Take the pole off. <laughs> go. I take what I can get. I am going in center. Yeah. You are going right behind Friedrich. Can you cast me to side? I was not thinking we could thread that needle. 
I, could, I don't know what you were thinking, but it was I could could have made that. You have plenty of room on both sides. Him and God. <laughs> he learned how to drive vein line from his mother. So. <laughs> <laughs> if you are having questions, we would be happy to answer them at this time. Nobody is having questions. You all know everything. Yeah. <laughs> Bravo, Fallon. Does everyone enlist, or do you uh, enlist them? Ah, do we conscript, or do we enlist? Every single man here chose to be here. We're not English. <laughs> we actually, well, we're German, so not surprisingly, everybody wants to fight. <laughs> no, it is a good point. Every man in this, it is volunteer, uh, but it is a good way to make money. Many of these men, they are either peasants, or they are perhaps... Um, there were apprentices or journey, journeymen who could not find employment. So this is a good way to make money. If they are married, perhaps they will hold on to some and be able to set up their own shop later. Four guilder a month is a lot, but they are very good at spending it. They have to provide their own food, they have to provide their own entertainment, often in the form of gambling, sometimes in the form of company. So, lots of times in the form of drinking. And drinking normally needs to more of the other stuff. So, they don't always have a lot left at the end, unless they are married. You will notice uh, that there is Friedrich's wife, Wilhelmina, is right here on the front row. The women travel with us on, on the campaign. Women and children, you already saw one of the things that they can do for us. Another very important thing is after we have slaughtered our opposing force, someone has to come along and pick up all the nice things. <laughs> and that is a good job for the women. Not only will they pick up the nice things, they will also make sure that if any of us are injured that we get tended to, and if any of the opposing side is injured but not dead, that they get tended to as well. But probably not the same way. <laughs> Unless the people on the other side look like officers and have money, then we take them back and we ransom them back to the to their force later on. Always a profit to be made. Very good. I have no idea what time it's being. Anyone? Three two. Three two. Very good. I think we have time for one more question before the birds are needing you here. Anyone? You're all afraid. That's fine. We are at Duskout Fane Line. We are located in the encampment just a little bit up the path. If you have other questions, we would be happy to answer them for you. Please feel free to stop by, visit our camp. Um, and just because I don't want to hold it up for them, come by and see us later on. We're hard to miss. Yeah? We yeah. stick out. That is a um, show. Oh, yeah. And in uh, just about half an hour's time, we have shown you how we make holes in people. Well, from our barber surgeon, we'll be showing you how we patch them up afterwards. We'll be talking about battlefield medicine. Affairs, chocolate and muffin, affairs. Links, home links. Foods, marsh, yet marsh. Thank you, Shonara.